Okay, let's do this fucking shit. Hey, what's up? Welcome to the Pit episode 44. Am I correct, Devin? 44? Yeah, I think so. Let's awesome. go with that. Welcome to- yes. Welcome to Net Pet episode 44. I am your host, Drew Campbell. The other fat guy is Evan Gisella. What's up? And, and joining us today is our friend Johnny Mockney. I was giving a hey, hands yeah. for him. How you Thanks. doing? I'm, I'm doing very well. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course, man. We wanted to, we like we decided to change up the podcast a little bit by having someone who's just remotely intelligent on the show for once. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. I yeah. when you when when you texted me kind of about it just a bit ago, I was like, I really could have joined earlier, but I was like in the middle of palming some cheese curds that my sister gave me <laughs> that were all in the fridge, and I. I I can't. I was like, I got to give myself at least a half hour. <laughs> you have to process to the people. cheese, man. You got to yeah, let it yeah. go down. I understand. And they're curves. They're an awkward shape. They're not really meant to be eaten like that. Well, also think. at the end of the day, we're just trying to eat enough cheese to forget that the world's ending. Honestly. <laughs> <Right. Yeah. laughs> yeah. Really, at the end of the day, is put cheese on anything I eat because at the end of the day, if there's cheese on it, I won't remember that everything, we're going to die in a heat death as long as I'm eating cheese. <laughs> by, by my third handful of cheese, I've forgotten my credit score and everything's a little <laughs> better dude don't get me started on credit scores i just started reading <laughs> i've been reading the book sapiens and they've been talking about the cognitive revolution and about how most of everything is a, a shared imagined reality mm. and then i've been on like a big kick the rest of the day about like well the credit score technically if it has no energy and creates no mass it's fake <laughs> and uh all we're doing is just a, it only exists in my mind in the mind of bankers so really i'm just banking off their reality to like let my life exist so as soon as you start on that, it's like I'm on a <laughs> shroom trip without even doing shrooms. Like, that's that's a pretty liberating realization to come to. I think I I didn't I haven't checked it, but I was googling the other day uh, what gives you a good credit score, and I looked at the list and I was like, oh, I haven't done any of those things. So, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the exact same boat, and you know what? The number one thing that gives you a good credit score is having parents with good credit scores that can yeah. vouch for you. That's the yep. number <laughs> yeah. one. It's crazy, Nailed that one. but. Yeah, as long as you have parents that have a good credit score, they can co-sign for a lot of things. You can get bank on that. Yeah. I've got one of those, I think. You got one. I just only think one of them is a credit score. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, only one of them is really the vouchable yeah, parent yeah. that I can I won't, come to. I won't say who, but yeah. They yeah, because the this, I, I won't say who because I know the other one is going to listen to this. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest. The parent that has the bad pe- credit score is probably the one that supports you more. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, no, because we're more we're more alike, how, really. That's how it always <laughs> works. At the end of the day, yeah. So uh, a lot of things happen today. A lot of things happen this week, but we want to talk about all these things, but we only have a finite amount of time, unfortunately, because we're humans and mortality and shit. So do you guys want to start with a negative or a positive? I'll let the guess. Feels... Okay. Oh, um, let, let's start positive and then go down positive. The, okay. So go down we, a horrible rabbit hole. Yeah, later, let's yeah. go down a horrible rabbit hole <laughs> later. So positive Evan's sister just can like you know she competed in the you know marriage probably the most positive thing hopefully i mean statistically negative but positively we're trying to you know hang out there competed well i mean marriage <laughs> won. is a war <laughs> marriage is a war she just started the race dude you can't say she won a race that she just started <laughs> like well it's going well so far in the first 3 days for what yeah, i've been exactly. hearing well, all right. So, Did you get updates? <laughs> no. You get live updates? You don't have to refresh? No, I assume the fact that I haven't been updated, it must be going well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, I would assume that with all silent victims. <laughs> like, uh, I don't know. It, it, they seem like a great couple. They seem like they're in love. But um, this is the funniest part. Do you want to go right into, like, the actual <laughs> ceremony, Evan? Yeah, I guess you can kind of go with what your thoughts were and I can chime in with my commentary. 
Okay, so uh, and, and Johnny, you didn't have to be here to know that this is just hysterical. Were you there, the Drew? Back. Yes, I was. Oh, okay, he invited himself I, also. <laughs> of course, yeah, no, yeah. no, no, no. I didn't invite myself. What Evan is a friend I basically was like, I, my sister's getting married. And you're like, dude, you gotta let me come. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically pretty much how it happened. I was like, all right, I don't got plus one. That sounds what it was, but really, honestly, yeah, I'm Evan's plus one. Evan couldn't get a date, so I was his family's plus one. So. To his family, we're technically a couple now at this point. We are the Jay and Silent Bob of his family. We're the hetero life mates that exist in reality to him, where I have to now be part of his family because he hasn't found a girlfriend yet. I'm the closest thing you have to a partner. Yeah, that's why we do a podcast. Well, I mean, you're the closest thing I have to. <laughs> <laughs> I personally but, think podcast partners are, are probably closer than soulmates could ever be. No, you're 100% correct in that one. Uh, I've unleashed more to myself on Evan on this podcast to people I've been in partnerships to the point where I've been in a relationship while I've had this podcast and people have learned things about me in my relationship from listening to this <laughs> podcast, <laughs> which sounds like a healthy relationship, right, yeah. at the end of the day. Uh, no, but at the biggest alarming thing, Johnny, I think you could appreciate this, at Evan's sister's wedding – it was a beautiful wedding, beautiful place and all this, but uh, the priest that was doing like the gospel and all the stuff for their wedding in the midst of the wedding, he talks all about this love and then he takes a break and he goes, then there's also divorce, <laughs> which like immediately <laughs> I'm taking about like, who the fuck brings up divorce at a wedding? Yeah. Like they're not even married yet. And this guy's already bringing up divorce. And then he's like, he does a whole spiel about like wedding and love. And he goes, but then there's divorce. And we didn't recognize divorce for a while, but now we do. And he goes, and we live in Michigan where there's a no fault divorce law. Do you know what no default divorce means? And it was like, I was legit <laughs> expecting him to grab the groom by the shoulder and be like, that means he doesn't get any of your shit, dude. You're good. Like, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> It sounds like he was doing a bit. Uh, that's but... it. No one laugh. I'll, <laughs> okay. Yeah. You know what? I was gonna, that, that'd be like if a doctor delivered your baby and once the baby came out, he was like, isn't death wild? Like, yeah, dude, oh my God. Dude, it's we crazy. die. We stop breathing eventually. Uh, no, no the baby's think, fine. Why wouldn't he be? I don't know. It's crazy. We're on the same thought pattern because as soon as I thought that, I was like, I was the same. I was like, I was like, if a baby got born, he's like, you know, like, infant crib death is a thing like like, <laughs> like it's like why don't bring that's not the time to bring this up like we're trying it's to, to point out the it. realities of human life and that divorce is one of them and it's you're married now try to love each other try not so to you don't have to divorce why would you even tempt them with the idea though isn't that kind of satany what if that was the first time they were hearing about divorce and they're like, we can do that? <laughs> <laughs> that takes a weight off our shoulders. I thought this, this was a, a forever thing. Yeah, you're like, you mean this This could be just two years? Oh, my God. Thank God. I was really doing this because her dad just pressured me into it because I slept with her, but I didn't. Like... Well, we're, not they... we're not still talking about your sister here, Evan. This is a more so hypothetical. I thought that was. I took that I'm, still, hypothetical talking, I'm that still talking good. about Evan's sister. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I looked much. at you. I was like, "Oh, Drew, Drew's definitely still talking about my sister." Yeah, well, it very felt finite in their relationship. <laughs> like, True. it was a great wedding. It was beautiful, though. I did, except the priest was like, it was almost like, all right. I mean, me, me, and Evan both grew up Catholic. Giant, how are familiar are you with Catholic um, gospels or Catholic like? Um, I was, I was raised mass. Catholic. I'm actually confirmed. So, okay, so you yeah. understand, like, so you understand, like, a lot of the times the priest try to. Like fit, like fit jokes into the yeah. gospel, yeah, and everything. That's like how that. I. That's wh who inspired me to start comedy. Is <laughs> Father is Dwight. Pity yeah. laughs from a congregation is what yeah. inspired you. <laughs> the soft, like. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. The, the um, I should laugh because uh, he's the in charge of me getting to heaven or hell. Laughs. <laughs> I mean, look, I can I, we, I can joke about this all day, but I've seen. I've seen a couple priests absolutely murder before. And I seen, have too. You know, I've done, I've had far worse sets than some of the sets I've seen oh. from priests. <laughs> oh, dude, sometimes priests clean house. That's yeah. only, like, my mother is still heavily Catholic, so every once in a while she'll drag me to, like, you know, like a religious thing, like, you know, 
um, Easter vigil or you know Christmas mass, and then mm-hmm. every once in a while I'm like, dude, this priest is just murdering right now. Like yeah. he, he knows his audience, he's crushing yeah. the priest. Growing up in my church, uh, he would uh, bring out props. Who's just a prop guy? <laughs> <laughs> so just killed every week. Like carrot top. <laughs> yeah, Evan went to a church where there was a splash zone. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Gallagher of uh... <laughs> instead of making the he made the wine in front of you he smashed the grapes into the blood of God <laughs> like there's grapes in front of you he took a hammer put your fucking ponchos up guys because we're about to make the blood of God like blood of Christ but this priest to be fair oh sorry my bad sorry right, one you. inaccuracy <laughs> if you're fan. Catholic you really got to know they're different people because you no. there's three of them you yeah I mean. Them. I mean, he made it kind of confusing saying they were all one, though. In all fairness, he did say they were all one. If so. you don't say all three of their names, God won't hear the prayer. You gotta- <laughs> <laughs> to be yeah. honest, I don't understand why Christians aren't more into trans when you had Jesus who said he was three different people. <laughs> he said he was God. He said he was the Holy Spirit, but they can't support trans people saying they're another identity. Really, I don't, think, the- I don't think the church has issued an opinion on trans people. They haven't because they're scared to admit that Jesus was the first trans. Like, historically, I feel like he was. <laughs> he was the first person to identify as multiple things. He identified as a spirit, a father, and a man. I mean, the Catholic Church is still wishy-washy on things like gay marriage. I'm pretty sure they don't even think. Like, trans, is, <laughs> trans issues are, like, 57th on their docket. They haven't gotten <laughs> that. Like, yeah, they'll... Well, that's a, exactly yeah. how many years it will take them to address it, I feel like. <laughs> yeah, 57. <laughs> But well, no, they'll like, they'll address it by the time everybody else is cool with it. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, they really know how to come in on the back end and just be like, "Look, we're cool with it now." Like, oh look, look <laughs> at the Catholic Church being hip. Like, yeah. <laughs> Fifty years too late. Like, <laughs> um, no, but like the thing with that wedding is like they were, they had the priest that was trying to make all the jokes, but he was literally just bombing with every joke to the point where no one even knew if it was a, a joke or not. Like when he was bringing up divorce, just everyone felt uncomfortable. Mm. He was literally an edgy comics version of a priest doing jokes. <laughs> like he was bleeding the line too much. <laughs> like you, you, you know, when you, um, you meet like an open micer for the first time and, and not to talk down to open micers. Cause I'm not much well, better than well, I'm, 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 I'm also mostly, one of them. <laughs> we're all, we're all open micers. We all do open yeah. mics more than we do anything else. Yeah. But like, sometimes you meet like a first time open micer and you talk to them and about like what they do and they go like, Oh, I'm more of a rant comic. And you go, Oh no, like, yeah, you, dude. you know, it's coming. It's like, that's holy shit. Imagine I'm, like a priest going, I'm more of a rant priest. <laughs> I'm more of a rant <laughs> priest. I don't really have any points to say, but by the end of this, most of you are going to not want to be part of the Catholic Church. <laughs> I got this great bit on no-fault divorce. Just <laughs> I ran it by I the other like, guys. I feel like that's what he was trying to do, is be edgy. But it's funny that you mentioned that, because like a long time ago, I went... Well, not even a long time ago, but recently an open mic happened in my own city, Sacramento, which there's been no open mics for a long, long time, ever since I canceled the one I ran. And someone finally... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Evan's aware of this. Oh, yeah, I got that. I ran an open mic in Saginaw for a while, but I came to this open mic and this guy went up on stage. This guy never did like an open mic before, never did comedy. He's a DJ. But so he comes up on stage. So he's the guy running the sound. So before he comes up on stage, he runs his own like music. No one's had intro music. So he wrote like set up intro music for him to come on stage. He wears sunglasses. So me, I'm like. This guy doesn't understand comedy from the get go because he's because <laughs> he's trying to be cool, like you yeah. know, like, which, which is the worst idea. Like the cool, guy, cool. I think is I think I've said this on this podcast before, but I think cool is the opposite of being funny. Right, you're trying Look, to be cool. unless you're Andrew Dice Clay, you can't pull off cool but that, comedy. <laughs> exactly, yeah, exactly. But that's almost a parody <laughs> of being cool than it is right. actually being cool. This guy's legit trying to be cool. He pulls up a chair on stage, does it backwards style, oh. like su- substitute teacher style, sits on stage, and then the first words that came out of his mouth were, "I don't really know any jokes." That was mm. the first words. And I remember being a good like, opener. Never good opener. I'm a, I'm a comic. I hate hecklers. I hate everyone who heckles a comic ever. But this guy opened, and even as a comic, surged out of me. And I was just like, oh, fuck you. Like, it's just like, I couldn't not feel this feeling of a guy. I don't really do 
through jokes, but I'm funny as fuck. So here I go. Yeah. You and see, was, yeah, yeah. I I love seeing bad first timers, but it's only if they're like actually if they write jokes. Like if yes. they're sincerely trying yes. and they bomb, it's like there's something endearing to that. And there's there's like there's something that they tried that didn't work. Well, when you, somebody goes up there and they're just riffing, it's just, it's just a waste of time. You know. You're like, uh, well, I hate your guts. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Honestly, like, I hate your guts. First time reminds me when Mike says that you go up yeah. there, like, is this funny? <laughs> nudge, nudge to the crowd. But like me and Evan both started. Evan, you were 18. I was 18 when we both started. Yeah, um, we started doing yeah. the first mics. Look so how far we've come. <laughs> I was yeah. also 18 when I started. Look at that. Oh, you did? Yeah. When did you? What was I'm, your first mic? Do you remember it? Uh, my first mic was uh, my first real mic was Max Monday Comedy Night. What yeah. was it? Because you hung I, out I, there a lot, and then you just kind of like trying to. Hang I out. did. I went there all the time. I was a regular. I didn't have a car because I was, it was my freshman year of college, and I I wasn't you know it was like and I also couldn't get into Crunchies because I wasn't twenty one. Right. And they, they would card me when I even just tried to go in and see the yeah. show. But I hung out all the time. And then there was, there was a bit of nepotism because I did know some people who knew Dan uh, from back into his connections. Who cares? Days. Right, right, right. So he knew <laughs> who I was. And, but I still submitted to the page like three or four times before they let me go on. And the time they did let me go on was this mysterious day where Rob and Pat both weren't there. And the, mm -hmm. the day, like the, <laughs> it was like a shorter lineup than usual. And it was kind of a whittled down crowd. So it was very low stakes. Well, now we have we have to talk about this because there are seven people in Grand Rapids that are literally like punching their fucking death <laughs> right now, hearing you say that your first mic was Max. <laughs> like, so yeah, dude, they, anyway. they were asking me to be on by the end. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, honestly, yeah. I mean, I yeah. get it. When you look at the talent in Michigan, of course, the guy who goes up for like for his first time is requested, like clearly. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But the funny part of this, me. some people will, who listen to this don't know what Max is. So, Jai, do you want to really lay down the law, or do you would you rather one of us talk about what Max was to Michigan comedy while it was alive? Um, well, I think you guys knew it longer than I did, so you're probably more authoritative. It took me longer to get on it than yeah. you, though. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, actually I had to quit comedy and come back to comedy before I got on to Max. Mm. Weirdly well, enough, I did comedy for a long time. Like, I don't know, I was like 18 to about 21 ish. And then I quit for a year and then I came back to comedy. I could never get on Max. And then I came back and they just put me back up. I don't know what that says or what that means, but I did go and do Max and I did like three months in a row. And then eventually they kind of this like, dis I did like the outside show during COVID. They weren't really doing around and then they dissolved. But Max was for a while was the most lucrative Oak and Nike in michigan which is the saddest sentence you could ever say <laughs> <laughs> well dan curry would describe it as uh as basically an unpaid showcase because they were still they would take requests but they were still incredibly selective and yeah. they they had to know yeah. they they had to have at least seen you or somebody had told them directly that you were good or something correct yes but also it's sad that there's people that are upset they've never been on that when it's still technically an unpaid open mic like you know what I mean? yeah oh you didn't get to drive an hour and a half to do seven free minutes yeah for a exactly. crowd that might not have yeah. liked you like i mean yeah, that was a pretty good were, room for the most part the audience it, no was great. It, it was a great room not even and, dissing the room at all it was no. fantastic and i think it, partially what made it such a big deal is that the people running it are very well respected yeah. comics like they're they were really respected yeah. they were really good comics i mean just right well respected. They, were yeah. just, they were naturally all really funny comics didn't have anyone running that room it was like this guy it was like no they're actually really funny people like all of them we used to break down like the a b and c teams of lansing and, and lansing a team was was always the max, max crowd true, yeah. so yeah dan pat and rob all the time yeah no fantastic guy but also funny to think of how many people an adult because i was 18 by the time i was like why the fuck can i get on this mic and this is before um this is just dan and mark at the time this is before 
like it originally started it was dan and mark which mark has i believe mark's now got a job at hard times he's moved he's doing great he's out in like arizona yes yeah 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 yep and i remember i remember being like oh i can't believe i get on max and now it's funny that like when that whole thing fell apart when you see these people getting mad about it, it's like, like <laughs> which actually if any grand rapids people are out there listening it was like it was really sick uh you killed yeah. all the time and we all got like we all got blowjobs after every I was single just set say, i did get blowjobs every time i was there even A when i did fact. bad even though when i did bad it didn't matter it was just the <laughs> fact you were on a max stage. if i did bad i got two that way it softened the the blow of not doing well every so. time i i did max i got offered a feature weekend when i was done <laughs> i was offered a full feature weekend and i mean say what you want about max but it clearly showed lucrative wise yeah if, that's if I the did, grand rapids people are listening that's the truth well we have um i check um the numbers we have three people from grand rapids that listen to every week at least <laughs> audio wise <laughs> I don't think and i guarantee people. you they're comics because they're nowhere they're just regular people yeah Oh man, I, I'd love to guess. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. You don't want to? <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't guess who the three are. I Drop your replies. I, to be comments. honest, <laughs> you are a grand uh, you, fan base. No, Johnny, you've been on Max. You probably don't even know their names. <laughs> <laughs> no, Johnny, I do. You're a big dog. <laughs> you don't know their names. <laughs> I knew their names, and then and then uh, when I got closer to Dan Curry, I forgot them suddenly. Yeah, of course, yeah. naturally. Oh, who you are you? I'm a Max yeah, comic. Now. You can't keep Grand Rapid comics in your name <laughs> when you're in a scene that's booming. Like you're right. Got to <laughs> sever those ties. Got to chop off the arm to save the body. You know? Yeah, exactly. The first time um, I did Max was uh, like a year in, and I opened and bombed so horribly that I wasn't on for another four years. That's 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 a pretty impressive uh, Max opener. My first time I did Max, <laughs> it was like two months me into back back into being stand up and not to break, I murdered the first time I was there, and then the second time I bombed, and then the third time they had me up and I was all right, and then they had me up on when they went to the COVID outside show and I bombed again, <laughs> and that was the last <laughs> time I was on my. The roller coaster. Uh, the Max before, yeah, it was really, like the first time I'm like, I'm finally at Max, and I just murdered. I remember I had like one of the best open mic sets I ever had, and the next time I came back, they had me on. I just bombed, like it was almost all silence. The next time I was up, I once bombed so badly at Max, and otherwise it was like a good night. Yeah. So I there was nobody to blame except myself, and yeah. I decided to open on some brand new partially written stuff about the Brett Kavanaugh hearings that had just happened. <laughs> well, we uh, hope, this is why we're yeah, at, yeah. Uh, Johnny. Uh, uh, shout to all of it. The reason we're having Johnny here right now is there's some like political shit that dropped today, and we want right. to get his opinion on it. So it's great, Johnny. We'll talk to you is about your Brett Kavanaugh material. Oh, I don't even. I I can't even look. There were there were words I said that you should shouldn't even ever say uh, when you're trying to make people smile. <laughs> so uh, but, wait, wait, but, do you mean like words like capitalism? Or yeah, yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. All right. No. Uh, um, but uh, I tried this stuff and it, it, it just soured the rest of the set. So I immediately like jumped out and went into my old reliables, but it was too late. And um, I remember that night, uh, I Rob Jenkins talked to me on the porch for a bit and was just kind of giving me some, he was just like, hey, record your sets and, you know, listen to them. And, you know, just without telling me that I had a, a, the worst set he'd ever seen. Yeah. Uh, you know. And then... <laughs> And then uh, I don't know. Rob Jenkins has seen me perform multiple times. So <laughs> Rob Jenkins saw me perform when I was nineteen. So I don't know. Well, then I talked to Dan, and Dan Dan just kind of encouraged me. He was like, "Yeah, you, you should hit the road more. You should try some other mics." <laughs> <laughs> and then and then stretch your um, legs a little bit, sir. Yeah. Like, yeah. And then I remember looking on Facebook that night, and then I think Dan posted like. Uh, Dude, Max was great tonight. Almost everybody killed. And I was like, God, like I'm the almost. <laughs> yeah, I'm, the yeah, only I'm reason. the almost. I'm I'm the one word difference between that sentence and what it could have been. Yeah, it's like everyone killed. And you're like, <laughs> shit. I made him add another fucking word in this sentence tonight. <laughs> it's funny when you get in an open mic. So like so how old were you when you started? You said you weren't 18. legal to drink. Eight, you so you were eighteen. Yeah, we all, so we all were eighteen. You, how long? How long you been doing it now? Um, I'm 22 now. 
So um, four, four I, I, I've years. been doing it almost four years. Yeah. Yeah. It, which COVID is kind of hard to count because there was a big break for a lot of us. Yeah. So if you don't yeah. count the COVID time. So three and a half. Three. three yeah. Yeah. Three and a you half. Were doing, you, were, you were doing podcasts probably. Though, I was right? doing podcasts and <laughs> every time every time the wave things went down and shows some type of show was happening again, I would do that. And then, uh, you know, yeah. it would come. And then winter time happened. And then because all the shows were outside. So once the winter came in, everything stopped again. Everything. Yeah. What a horrible time to be a comic. Hey, let's get into our next topic. Wait, no, no, no. I don't want to get into that yet because that's the negative part. Evan, is there anything you want to talk about your sister's wedding more? Just what you thought. You said you had a lot to talk about. Is that the, all we talked about was the well, speech? I, yes. Yeah, the speech that you, it was the worst priest I've probably ever seen. I would say that. But the other part I would say is that. Oh, he was. That's why I was confused because it was a Catholic seminar right he's a deacon so he could be married that's he brought up his dead wife which was oh. you know again another thing maybe not to bring up during a wedding like yeah yeah evan how did you feel about him bringing up his dead wife just let him talk you think that's what he wants to talk or? about yeah but it's other people's day you know he's trying to share he brought experience. up his dead wife and then said yeah, I know, but it's not about him, right? Isn't it about the other people? <laughs> it's just so funny that Evan's like here trying to defend his, his yeah, wedding. Yeah, trying to listen to the truth. Like, like, no, the guy who was at the, the service is just roasting it. <laughs> well, come on, he sucks. Can you just not admit he sucks? <laughs> like, he brought up divorce. He brought up his dead wife. Like. It was all things that made me not happy about marriage. It was all things like, oh, that. you mean all He's the worst man. things about marriage? He's about how man. they'll maybe leave you or maybe how they will. No, he, he talked about how maybe they'll leave you. He talked about how you're probably one of you is going to die way before the other one and then leave the other one to be sad for a long time. Like it was like all the worst things about marriage. You should be talking about you guys will love each other for eternity and God chose like if you're gonna do the Catholic wedding, do all the positives. Don't bring up divorce and death. Like Yeah. Come on. You're not you have no opinion on this. You felt totally comfortable when he brought up his yeah, most people did. You were the only one because you haven't been to church and like. Years. I sat with your family and I was the most charismatic person in your fam. I know, but I was. I like your family liked me more than you. That was weird at the table. Yeah, I mean, like I'll take it a vacuum. Come on, I was charismatic. I was making. I don't know your uncle. Who was that even? Your uncle and your yeah, aunt that I sat across from. Yeah. They loved yeah. me. Yeah, I guess they did. Your mom's best friend loved me. Yeah. And the jokes murdered. Like, Johnny, you weren't there. His sister and his mom murdered their speeches. They were getting so many laugh breaks. Mm. It was amazing. I mean, what yeah. kind of crowd was it, though? Like, what, what, you know, what age range? What, uh, that is a good point. That will definitely shift it. I would say yeah. the table next to us was full of his sister's friends. So there were a lot of people, uh, early 20s to late 20s. Oh, okay. That was the table next to us. They were cleaning house on them. The rest of the crowd was probably your average 30 to 60 range with a little bit 60 plus. Early twenties to late twenties is a really good group to have. Really, like if you're, I, that's usually the crowd I hope for. I I do too, but honestly, then I the last time I was at Max, I performed in a mostly um, adult, like a mostly like probably I would say Evan, would you say fifty plus crowd? <laughs> last time when I did Max. that, would you say you when I did not Max? Sorry, fucking um, Crunchies. What yeah. was that? I did like what was it? It was like a fifty plus crowd. And I was able to connect with them on the whole idea that I'm their um I'm like their kid's friend that they don't want them to be friends with. <laughs> I just like rolled into that. I'm like, I, I know I remind you as like the kid, like your 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 kid's friend that you didn't want them to be friends with. And then I like kind of based my whole set off that and it kind of worked. Of like, oh yeah, you remember me? I was that kid that you didn't want your friends, your kid to be friends with, and now your kid's in college, and I'm doing stand up in front of you. Like that was like the whole basis of the set, and that kind of worked. 
But I agree with you. Normally, if I see a crowd that's like on average over 30 plus, I'm like, I'm mm. probably fucked. Like, I, I once, yeah, yeah, no, I know what you mean. I, I once, uh, uh, sorry, I think I interrupted you. My fault. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, 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 I once, um, a crowd of like 50 something year olds and afterwards uh, I'm, I'm kind of paraphrasing what he said but jim elliott said to me like uh, uh like take age your crowd into mind before you make references because they already he was like, because it's like, if I reference a singer, they don't know. Dude, you know? that but, is amazing, because the one I did, Crunchies, Jim Elliott was there. And Jim... Oh, really? Yeah, no, he yeah. said this, like, um, it's, the first three people to show up was me, Dave Welfare, and Jim Elliott. I'm having a beer. I'm sitting and talking with him. Jim Elliott said, it's like, some comic told me once, never give a... And my response to that was, I've been doing this wrong for seven <laughs> years. Oh, shit, I've been totally the wrong. Like, normally my opener is a reason to dislike me. I was, like, yeah, was going <laughs> to say, I, I count how many bits are on my set list. And I'm like, yeah. I got like 14 reasons to dislike him. Yeah, exactly. I say hello, and they're like, fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> but, just, uh, uh, Evan, back to, sorry, back to your sister's wedding. Um, I want to say just right what was there your most- that the... the- Audio, I'm, the video kind of c- cut in and out there. That's mm. fine. So I don't know if you're listening on YouTube. We apologize for the inconvenience, and we'll see what happens. Ugh! <laughs> Stop apologizing. It's a free content video. <laughs> well, people are like, "What's going on here?" I'm I like, just well, did the best a... bit of my life. <laughs> yeah, we just ruined everyone the just classic missed, moment. Everyone just missed Johnny and his best two minutes of his life. <laughs> I peaked just then and there. You peaked on a podcast no one listens to. Congratulations, <laughs> man! <laughs> well, I think the weather. So, Evan, what was bad. your favorite? Oh, so it's your fault. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> I'm recording saying, this and it's so kind of going in and out. Your so. fault. All right, but back to the way. Evan, what was your favorite part of the wedding? Uh, that dance off. I I dan- had a dance off with the best man that Drew threw me into. Which dance off? It's the one where you literally pushed me in. It was like to shout by the eyes. And of honestly, you totally lost. Yeah. Well, we did the same move. Shout. Put your hands up. And was shout. it like the scene in Animal House, kind of? The same vibe? It, it was a, pretty much the exact, yeah. except imagine less people enthusiastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was three white people that cared, and the rest of the family was... <laughs> Evan's family... Uh, your sister's wedding was so sad that majority of the people that watched your sister and her new husband do their first dance was me and my brother and his girlfriend that crashed the the fucking party. Yeah, you guys got my family commented on on you and, and your brother. They're like, who's the guy with the beard that was dancing energetically? I'm like, oh, that's Sam. Yeah, because my brother crashed your sister's wedding with his girlfriend. And honestly, I think we were all more involved than 90% of your family. Because I remember they were doing their first dance. I'm like, why is there only 10 people watching? Everyone else was just sitting at a table, kind of just picking eating. over their beef. <laughs> no, they were just, not even eating. They were just kind of like picking at their beef tenderloin. <laughs> Which was delicious, by the way. It was, but come on. It's their first dance. Yeah. Were they just, you feel like they were not involved? Because, Johnny, you probably don't know this. Uh, this technically wasn't their first wedding. This was their second wedding. They did a COVID wedding, and then this is like their repeat to have people. Yeah, Johnny's heard, Johnny's heard my bit about it probably 15 oh. times. They they brought... <laughs> yeah. yeah so Ever they since brought, the first wedding, I've been yeah. hearing it. Yeah. So they brought it... Yeah, they brought it back. <laughs> they okay. said, it was like Back to the Future 2. No one was as well interested, and it wasn't as good. Like, mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I that's... I. I get it, you know. I get why you'd want to do it, but it's like personally, I would just hold off on the first one. Uh, personally, I yes. would never have a wedding. I just want to go to the courthouse and get over with it. <laughs> maybe, maybe go to Olive Garden or something like yes, that. Yes, personally, I would never want to get on that free money, man. 
Yeah, yeah. Exa- well, here's oh, that's it's like a graduation party. Honestly, all you're looking for is some free like checks. You know, well, I mean, honestly, the yeah. day, it's reimbursement. Um, it's reimbursement. It's not reimbursement because your dad paid for the wedding, so it's not ideal yes. reimbursement. <laughs> your dad paid for the wedding, correct, Evan? It was a team they, effort. Oh, it was a team okay. effort. <laughs> they split. Both I, fathers I don't split. Know. It? I'm not going to p- reveal that publicly. They paid for all one and a half of the weddings. <laughs> he it paid for. It was two in our hearts, man. It was two in our two in our hearts. Does that mean they would have to get two divorces? I mean, probably. I don't know. They but have to a <laughs> solely. <laughs> Like reimburse both parents, and you got like, well, some of that should be kicked back to them. Yeah. At the end of the day, but Evan, what the fuck, dude? Are you just making so much more editing work for me? No. Can you hear any of this? This is the worst technical. Issue. We've never had a problem. Evan, no one can hear you. Oh, there we go. Evan, did you ruin this whole podcast? <laughs> no, it's still recording. I just got bumped. I think it's because we, ha- I don't know about, I think it's the weather. The, the Wi Fi spotty tonight. It was raining here. Very, very, mm. con- very democratic of you. Blame the weather. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's everyone else's fault. We were just talking about how I think your uh, brother in law is kind of fake. No. <laughs> I couldn't tell if he froze or if he didn't have anything to say there. I think your brother-in-law is a great guy, uh, and I think it's I think it's excusable that that one time privately he used that one word to describe that group of people. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, I think he's a swell dude. Backed up in that big of a line at Sonic, <laughs> how could he not do that? I mean, the line at Sonic was so. Long. How could he not? <laughs> and here's the best part is I don't know if Evan's speechless or if he's actually frozen. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> I'm trying to get Evan, what's our next topic? I um here we go. Okay, I think we're all back together now. Okay. Hopefully. Okay. Till the next I've like, been we've minutes. been together for this whole time. You you've been out of the loop. We've been saying a lot of nonsense. I hope none of it makes yeah. it through. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> Cause your brother in law will be pissed. Yeah, yeah, he won't <laughs> like it. <laughs> the the fifty bucks I gifted him as a uh wedding gift, they ain't gonna make up for what I said publicly about him. <laughs> Jeez. So have to edit that what, out. what are we up on what's the next step on the dock? Uh, I don't know, Cuomo, Biden, Docket. COVID. Okay, so Cuomo. So Cuomo. am I... Andrew Cuomo, okay. governor of New Cuomo. York. So, today we're recording this on August 3rd. A bunch of allegations just dropped on Cuomo. Um, it's like, a, uh, like a, I think it's like a DJ Biden. for a radio station. 11 or 12. Yeah, what's the next spin track? Oh, Cuomo lied again. <laughs> um, it was like 11 or 12 different women have spoken out against him on allegations. And, and then even Biden responded within the day, which is crazy because I didn't even know he had a memory. And um, he said that like he should resign. Um, I mean, the allegations is 11 to 12. I'm a normal human being that doesn't believe 11 to 12 people would lie. So it's clearly probably... Uh, I mean, as anyone, I mean, there's no proof at this point, but like clearly there's sexual harassment involved in his uh, administration at this point. And he already came back and said, hey, don't believe this stuff. You've all the nursing home deaths. That's kind (laughs) of how I feel about him right now. It's like, why would you ever think anyone would believe you again? Which... Did either of you read any, like know anything about this at this point? 
I read a little bit about it. I mean, there's been more accusations before too. Like it's actually yeah. been it's been a running thing. It's been a running thing, but now the New York Times reported it, so now it's now it's news. Right. So like <laughs> now, the, the now mainstream care about liberal it. outlets are like, you can care about this now. Yes, yeah. exactly. Well, I don't for- care about it until his brother at CNN reports on it. That's Ex- when I'll care. Yes, Ex- <laughs> Johnny, you get it. it's just like uh, Bill yeah. Cosby. There was a bunch of allegations out for years, but we didn't care about it until someone reported yeah. about it. <laughs> like, I believe Chris no, I mean, Cuomo's in the report. Like, uh, is he really? Is, is, he, think, is he being accused of things too? No, he's just like. Well, uh, it isn't Chris Cuomo a psychopath? Wasn't he the guy who said like he made a YouTube video uh, where he said if he did like chest exercise, he could get rid of COVID. <laughs> Did he do that? I don't think that was him. Dude, I swear to God he did that. Look it up. I swear to God he made a video where he's like, yeah, COVID's a big thing, but if you do like these certain chest exercises, it will open up your lungs and you'll be fine. Which means don't believe anything he says. <laughs> Essentially believe the opposite of everything he says. Chris Cuomo is like the dumbest looking guy on TV. Like he's he's like he's like a like a discount rocky balboa just kind of like i don't know this is the news uh you know he's got like this big shoulders he's got that kind of like broad italian stereotype energy chris como whenever i hear him talk i believe i'm smart that's how dumb he is (laughs) so i'm like i feel like i have a college degree just from hearing chris como talk (laughs) it's just like that whole end of cnn it's like anderson cooper and uh you know Cuomo and Don Lemon. Look up Chris like, Como. Oh. Look up Chris Como chest exercise or exercise. I swear to God, he did a whole thing about how you can exercise COVID away from you. I swear to God, he did that. The the, the three guys you um the three guys you just mentioned. I when you have Anderson Cooper and then uh, Chris Cuomo and Don Lemon, you can use their names to break down like the three parts of REM sleep. As I. <laughs> All right, like, Jared, what, what, what's your first one for each one what's my what what would you say bleeds you into rem sleep what would you like if you lead oh in, it's like by the end ball. of anderson cooper i'm i'm yeah I'm, I'm, all right all right yeah. okay cool all right <laughs> i just want to check which and then after it's it's right after uh right after um i Don Lemon's gone, and then some obnoxious commercial for a healthcare yeah. company comes on and that wakes me back up. If you had any, all right, Johnny, if you had any person that's on TV that talks about politics publicly, and you had to equivalent them to your night sweats, like fucking, what do you call them? Um, night terrors, where you wake up in a full sweat <laughs> screaming. Who would you accommodate to that on public television? <laughs> like, who's your equivalent to that? Because not on public, because if we all did it would be and it would be Alex Jones. Alex Jones is everyone's night terror spirit. So you're saying on like cable television? Yes, on cable television. Who's your night terror sweat? Oh, Chris Matthews. That guy, I think he's gone now, but he was like, yeah, he's like this like spitting, like sputtering old man (laughs) who just was saying nonsense all the time. And then. He ended up, and he uh, he had the show called Hardball. And he ended up <laughs> which quitting is, in the middle of an episode. Which is funny enough. Like he had, I, sorry to interrupt you, but funny enough. No when you say Hardball, it reminds me of that terrible ACDC, ACDC single they released. <laughs> they, they released like they tried to release that like, was the song like, that led into his show. That was his. Yeah, uh, his it's show Hardball. Yeah. They tried to release like an EP, like maybe a couple years ago, and both songs were about baseball, and they were so terrible. You're like. You guys need to just all die at this point. <laughs> like, <it's> just... <laughs> but yeah. I, I remember Chris Matthews was interviewing Andrew Yang after one of the Democratic mm. debates, and it's like he just could not wrap his head around UBI as a concept. Like he <laughs> just did, he's like, so you want to give the, the money to the people, wait, but what if they don't have a job? And he's like, they get a money too. But he's like, but they don't have a job. How do they get the money? <laughs> and, it's, and his hair is just like you're just like oh, somebody's got. He looks like that down. meme of like twenty year olds in the modern century. Like is this where everything? sticking out they have black holes that's what him getting the idea of uh universal basic income is are you an awesome are you a fan of uh yang are you uh, not a fan i'm a moderate fan of yang's uh okay 
I, I liked him a lot when I was first, when he was kind of making those early rounds and he was like on Joe Rogan and a lot of stuff. And he was, I, I thought, I think, I still think a lot of his ideas are, and I think he kind of represents like a type of, a type of leader that we need, which is like a, a rational know, just, human being, just the rational logical <laughs> yeah. guy. I don't need a guy who goes up there with platitudes and, yeah. you know, whatever. Uh, I'm big, that, yang, that I'm big yang gang guy though. That's yeah. Yeah. Asking him. I do. I mean, I I do like Andrew. Yeah, I think it's an, in recent. It's only in like recent times where he's like, he's kind of been a little like a little too like weirdly pro Israel and his mayoral race. Yeah, and, stuff like that. and it was that. It was the supporting of Biden. It was um, he supported Biden a little too early. Yes, it was way before, too early. If any, if you ask yeah, anyone, like yeah. Bernie still that, had a good chance. For that. It's weirdly how he became best friends with Dave Chappelle, which should be a good sign, but. Is only a weird sign to me. Well, do you want to know something? Dave Chappelle offered to do free shows for Andrew Yang to promote his mayoral run in New York, and uh, Yang's uh, Yang's advisors advised him against it because Dave Chappelle was too controversial. And then it's like, oh, in the end, the the majority of votes that Andrew Yang got were just like were the Asian community and the conservative orthodox jewish community yeah because he did the pandering with yeah. israel and stuff and then it's like yeah not a lot of black people voted for andrew yang and it's like dave Chappelle could have probably could well use it yeah very well could help the Chappelle. Uh, and it's also funny is like to think that um so when i think to every conservative ever uh UBI is way more controversial than anything <laughs> Dave Chappelle ever said to them. Like, it's controversial amongst liberals too. Like it's not an entirely I one guess, yeah, group says the. You know, I've, I know a lot of liberals that aren't quite on board with that. And like, I and then it's like also if you look at the fan base he got originally, there were like progressives, there were ex Trump voters, and you yeah. know people all over the place who supported Yang. And so it was kind of a little sad to see, especially. During that mayoral run, where he like they fell apart. he had he had a lot of uh, Bloomberg's advisors on his team, and oh, like, I didn't know that Mike Bloomberg is like the worst example you could ever mm. use of like a person you'd want to replicate on a campaign. Trail. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, Especially yeah. if you're trying to be the personable, different kind of guy, and not your average he's dog. living dog shit essentially. Yeah, oh, no, <laughs> like, he's, he sucks. Mike Bloomberg was dog as a human, like that's what he was. Which sucks because, like, honestly, I, can, I, I like UBI. I like a lot of that. And if people don't, whatever. Like, I'm not, like, trying to – this is not, like, me going, like, hey, convert to my beliefs or anything like that. Like the guy a lot. You know, I read the fucking The War on Normal People connected me, me a lot. And I just felt like it was – he was a person that, out of all the candidates, was actually looking towards the future of what America is going to be and what America needs. And that's why I liked him so much. It wasn't like so much here in the now. He was building for the future, which I feel like yeah. not a lot of candidates were doing. I agree. And I, I've, I, on the record, I've met Andrew Yang, and he is a nice guy. I worked a, I worked a, a, a rally for him in Detroit back when because oh I was a pretty young at the time. Are you also a cuck? Is that now official? Yeah, yeah. On the <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> You're like <laughs> to be Andrew Yang for you to work for Andrew Yang. You have to show video evidence that you've been <laughs> According to conservatives, I, I don't had, know. I have plenty of I video only evidence. read Fox News. I only read Fox yeah. News. So, <laughs> um, and did you find that, um, Alex Kuman? Did you find his exercise video by chance or no? Chris Cuomo's uh, exercise yeah, video? Yeah, I did. Yes. I didn't want to... You're probably okay. wondering how I got in CNN shape. Yes. Well, let me let's, show you. Let's share this and watch this because it's baffling to believe anything this family would have to say after this. All right. Hold up here. Go ahead. Share it. Boy, this video because it's... Ba- how much time do we have left, by the way? Like 10 minutes. Do you remember when we started? 11.30. Do you have about 10 minutes? Okay. It's safe. All right. It's... Perfect. We'll do this and then we'll do plugs. We're probably good. All right. Evan, you're cutting out. Yes. Don't ruin it. We should probably go a couple minutes longer because you cut out. Oh. Now it's not loading. What? The video's not loading. Is it just me and you again, Johnny? Is this guy it cutting out on us? Oh my God. Now it's not loading. You froze on us. 
Uh, so we'll in the middle. We'll go ahead, have the video load in the time it's a. So uh, Biden just now the whole trying to. I don't. Th- it hasn't been approved, but he's definitely mm-hmm. trying to make a proposal about the whole like fucking extending the six to eviction For, um, eviction evictions. rates. Yeah, yeah based yeah. off code. What do you feel about that? I think I think he should extend it. Yeah. Uh, it's a little weird, you know, it's like we're coming I I think what it's the third today, right? So t- 2 days ago was it going to be like that's the day that a lot of people were evicted. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and, exactly. So it's a little late. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nancy Pelosi also went day. on vacation on the same day. Yeah. Of course <laughs> was a little did. tone deaf. Hey, everybody's <laughs> got everyone needs a fucking vacay. Dude, everyone needs a spa day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, it's just like yeah, th- w- w- what? Somebody else going to take those rooms right now? Are yes. people out and about looking for <laughs> looking so for you, apartments? So, hold up one second Evan, before we start this. Um so <laughs> do you want to know my opinion is on it? Yeah, go for it. I think if you're a landlord, you're a human sack of shit, and you shouldn't create your income <laughs> off of uh, people's basic needs to survive. All right, well, let's watch Chris Cumia talk about how uh, COVID can be uh, <laughs> you know, fixed Cuomo. from a chest action. Chris Cuomo, whatever. I, I don't know. I don't Anthony know Cuomo. The man is a national hero, True. I'm sorry. Jesus Christ. Every day's a new day. Let's get after it. Chris Cuomo is getting after it. In the gym. I'm doing the band thing, which is literally just like 10 of these. Sort of. You know, 10 of these, like really like. The CNN anchor is officially out of quarantine after testing positive for the coronavirus in March. I tested positive. Scared. Yes, as you might imagine. But better me than you. Now he's working on his recovery and documenting the whole thing on his Insta story. The recovery protocol, so recovery is a real thing. Um, this isn't just like your typical viruses and flus and stuff where you get over it. You have that one day or so where you're sideways, maybe eat a little bland diet, and then you're back to the regular and you work out a few times and you're back. This is different. I'm doing the band thing, which is literally just like 10 of these, you know, 10 of the like really light. Yep, that's Chris working it out with some resistance bands. Uh, they're explaining it to me almost as like, you know, coming back from like some major surgery or something. So there's no working out. I did 20 minutes this morning on the elliptical machine um, at like some low level just to get my heart rate up to like 130 or something for 20 minutes. I did it. I didn't break out in a fever. Good. Chris also hit the pavement for a 25 minute walk, rocking that mask like a boss. Wait, what, is the, what is the wording that it says with that? COVID has gone, but it will take many weeks to come back. I appreciate the sport truly. Walking around. Rest in peace, this woman, out. for Walk after back. I assume she. I, mean, I assume she killed herself after having to say rocking that mask like a boss. Yeah, I know. I mean, I, I honestly, I don't like her at all. He the, clip, quote, the way she, she approaches this information. Was Body may yeah. take weeks to come back. But Behind the camera, Chris's wife, Christina, who was also cleared to leave quarantine so by the CDC much. less than a week after Chris revealed that she tested positive for the virus, too. My wife has once again proven that uh, she is the stronger part of the couple. The missus powered through this. She's out of quarantine. Uh, she dealt with it in a fraction of the time. So we're among the blessed. Chris shared the moment he officially came out of the basement where he was self-isolating away from Christina <laughs> and his three kids, posting this video to Instagram. Right. Well, you're only, she only did a fraction of the time because she was allowed to leave. That's not how that works. Cleared by CDC, a little sweaty. Just work out what happens. This is what I've been dreaming of. Literally this this fucking guy. My wife. Yeah, right. <laughs> nice house. She was cleared by the CDC. She didn't have fever. She didn't have symptoms anymore. In more than seven days. Okay, can you pause the this clip seven? With... Yeah, pause. pause. This is seven. Can you, can you pause it? Yeah, it's pause. <laughs> I'll say. I love it, acting him like I, I love seeing him act like he's a hero from walking upstairs <laughs> when when there's when there's people that are struggling with an opioid crisis and there's people who 
can't like afford their rent or if they're waking up every day to not know if they can eat today. And Chris Cole walks up fucking stairs. He goes, yeah, I done it, guys. I did it. Like I walked upstairs today. It's I, a I, I fucking deaf asshole. The, the, <laughs> cult, of, the cult of personality around like reporters mm. and and politicians is ridiculous. Like we were, you know, it's like those people. Oh, I have these fantasies and his and come over and bring the dogs and they and I'm like, what? What are you? What are you talking about? Yeah, like, exactly. you're not even invited to this party. You're fantasizing about a party you're not invited to. They're talking about how <laughs> they can make to. more money off of you at that party. <laughs> <laughs> They're talking about. How can we capitalize on money off of you while also making you vote for us the next election? That's what they're doing. <laughs> right, weird, yeah. Because what's funny, you say cult... Do you like um the band Living Color at all? Yeah. Is it cult yeah. of personality? I mean, the, the song Cult of Personality by Li- Living yeah. Color. Yeah, what a yeah. fucking beautiful song to live by. To, I, I will make you believe two plus two equals four. Is that... Evan, um, I know uh, I'm treating you very much like a secretary right now. Can you pull up the lyrics to Cult of Personality by Living Color? Because I'm trying to think of the Pulled exact... up on my phone since we no, have this it's... video already. Yeah, up. it's fine. That's fine. But I mean, like, I mean, the deaf, like, like literally like showing people this while they're actually dealing with hard problems during COVID. Right. Like, What's the song called? Like a fucking, uh, it's um, Cult of Personality by Living Color. Uh, but like, like the deafness of like showing a video like this. And yeah. looking like how you're fucking great while there's people dealing with like economical problems. And there's a guy seeing this play on a TV while he's trying to sleep in a laundromat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's good. It's, there's oh, a guy. Good for him. Good for Chris. Good. Chris is back <laughs> on his feet again. He can walk upstairs. Don't worry, boys. America's back, baby. Chris Cuomo is okay. When COVID hits me at 50 with my tar lungs, I'm sure I'll be fine. <laughs> as long as I do Chris Como's walk upstairs. <laughs> routine i'm sure his i'm sure his brother won't lie to me at all <laughs> i've never been inside of a house with more than one floor how the fuck am i gonna walk upstairs huh yeah the only time i've been to a house with more than one floor is i broke into it so like, <laughs> <laughs> what do you want me to read just read the lyrics this i feel like this is a good way to well, where are we at in podcast was when we start and where are we at we're about two minutes left but we okay, maybe so I cut think out. I, honestly, that's fine. Read these lyrics. We'll do plugs. We'll call it good. All right. I, let's let's close it. I'm going to close it on the words of Living Colors, Cult of Personality. I think it's the most beautiful song about um, what what Johnny brought up, the Cult of Personality, which when you believe it's a lot about celebrities, but can be with politicians as, as well, for sure. Like when you just believe in every word they say and you're more into them than the actual reality of the situation. Yeah. All right. Look in my eyes. What do you see? The call to personality. I know your anger. I know your dreams. I've been everything you want to be. I'm the call to personality. Like Mussolini and Kennedy. I'm the call to personality. The call to personality. The call to personality. Neon lights, a Nobel Prize. Then a mirror sparks. The reflection lies. You don't have to follow me. Only you can set me free. I sell the things you need to be. I'm the smiling face on your TV. I'm the call of personality. I exploit you, still love. I exploit you, still you love me. I tell you one and one makes three. I'm the call of personality. Like Joseph Stalin and Gandhi, I'm the call of personality, the call of personality, the call of personality. Neon lights, a Nobel Prize, the leader speaks, that leader dies. You don't have to follow me, only you can set you free. You gave me fortune, you gave me fame, you gave me power in your own God's name. I'm every person you need to be. Oh, I'm the call of personality. And it kind of just continues on like that. Yes. Awesome song. Also, but you forgot the part. The beginning is the best part when it goes. Dinner. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot the of course thank uh, you for having me yeah of course dude welcome to our, you know our shit show so thanks 
Um, if you guys want, or if you're watching this on uh, YouTube, you fucking smash the like button and crush the subscribe button. Leave a comment. Leave a comment about how, I don't know, if you agree or disagree with any of our political beliefs. Call us fascists. That's what I'd say. Leave a comment about how we're fascists. Or, you know, uh, something about UBI. I don't know. Any of that. Or if you just want to comment if you think that Evan's um, sister's wedding sounded pleasant. Do that. Um, besides that, you can also um, find us on Facebook at Annette Pit. It's spelled like it sounds. You can find us on Twitter at Annette Pit. You can also, uh, if you're listening to us on Spotify, make sure to follow us, download all the episodes. If you're listening on Stitcher, make sure to follow us, download all the episodes. If you're listening to us on a podcast, make sure you leave us a five-star re- uh, rating and write a little bit of a review. Uh, if you have any questions, concerns about the show, you can email us at netpit at gmail.com. And besides that, Johnny, is there anything you would like to plug? Um, I have a podcast as well. It's a movie he podcast does. called We Are Movies. Uh, you can listen to that wherever you get your podcasts as well. And he has really good guests on that show, guys. You way better than our podcast. It. Way better than our podcast. Way better. No, it's 100% better than our podcast. Very funny. If you like movies, you need to listen to this podcast. Well, and I'm and I'm happy to have you guys on uh, sometime soon as well, uh, oh, yeah. just to improve that that guest list that you're referring <laughs> to. Uh, and um, I also was speaking of Andrew Yang and UBI. There's a video of me out there somewhere of me asking, uh, me talking to, it. to Ben Shapiro about that, Andrew Yang. And God UBI. damn it! That was the thing I forgot to bring up. Oh, uh, really? if you're on this podcast. You don't talk. I mean, go watch. Uh, giant talking about this but if you're on again i just remembered that i wanted to bring up i wanted to bring up you talking about uh talking to ben shapiro i did that was a couple years ago i talked to him at u of m and i got to i got to make fun of him to his face a little bit it was nice fantastic love it shout out ben you know Uh, check check him out (laughs) yeah shout shout out ben his wife has the driest pussy on the planet but (laughs) Uh, anything else, bro? You want to plug your Twitter or anything else? Yeah, you uh, yeah. I'm I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Johnny Mockney. Um, you got a big. Gonna... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, I, uh, speaking of a different Andrew Yang, Andrew Yang in Ann Arbor, I'm going to be on his show uh, at the end of this month, and then in September. I will be hosting at the Ann Arbor Comedy Showcase as well on uh, the 17th and the 18th. So. 17 and 18. Do you know the headliner at this point? I no? don't. I don't know the headliner or the feature. So. Okay. Well, go to the NRK showcase. They're going to have two shows probably that night. There's a late show and an early show. I'm going to tell you, as someone who's been to the NRK showcase, one of the best clubs in Michigan, such an intimate venue. Go yeah. fucking go out there. If you're in the area, just fucking pay. It's like usually, I think it's like roughly 15 to $25 for entry at 25, I think, for an NRK showcase. And dude, you'll get your money's worth. You'll have a good time. Buy some drinks. Watch the show. Go see Johnny host because he's fantastic. And they only get really good comics at fucking Ann Arbor Showcase for the most part. The most part sounded very condescending, but they do. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Evan, go ahead and do your plugs, man. First, I'd like to apologize to... uh... My family and and church for uh, Drew's comments. Uh, and also our fans for the potential technical difficulties that this episode has brought. Uh, other than that, you can find me at Salsa Evan on Twitter and Instagram. <laughs> this episode is going to be called Cult of Personality. I hope you realize that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's going to be heavily edited based off those words. Evan has created so much work for me. I'm going to blend two, three different audio files together now. <laughs> but thanks, Johnny. Thanks for coming on, man. And of good luck. Time. Listen to We Are uh, Movies. Fucking dude knows his movies. I mean, his favorite movie is, I believe, your favorite movie is The Thing, right? I would say so, yeah. That's yeah. my favorite movie, so really? I will I will bend on this guy. He clear- <laughs> Oh fuck! Did you? It's the we four audio. We got five. Yeah, we got to call. Yeah, we gotta call this. Are we good? <laughs> no, we got to call this. <laughs> the weather. Yeah.
This is cut, getting out of control. I don't know. It's oh, we're done. It's I, We already did it. It's ended with the last one. I said a bunch of things. Oh, well. But now we're, well, this is this is the after podcast. <laughs> hey, thanks, Johnny, for coming on, man. Of course, guys. Yeah, thanks, Johnny. Anytime. I actually appreciate it, dude. Thank and you honestly, I uh, still have all those posters in uh, my back trunk. So if I run right. into you, it's going to be a. I, I actually I grabbed all the stock ones I had. Okay. So the, the Blade Runner twenty forty nine one is the only good one, but they're all okay. the movie posters from them. I also have the Star Wars Solo one. Okay. <laughs> and even better, I have the Meg poster. Oh, brilliant. So you're going to get Amazing. all three of those. It's, okay. It's a real plethora. You're going to be a What a triple feature. <laughs> you're welcome. Yeah. Honestly, there's Thank one you. good movie out of all of those. <laughs> <laughs> the Meg. Uh, I mean, yeah, exa- the Meg yeah. crushed it, dude. Jason Statham <laughs> with that acting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He stabs the shark. He stabs the megalodon at one point with his, with, just with a knife. I know. I was hard as hell when he did it. Like, <laughs> I was like, this is testosterone at its finest. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys. Take it easy. Thank you for coming on, man. Appreciate it, dude.